In this update, I now have a PAL weather app that I literally launched two days ago and it's already trending number two among the weather apps, literally in between the weather channel and AccuWeather. And you can actually have this for yourself. It's now you can have PAL in a pocket. <laughs> you can simply go to the Apple store and you can download it there or also Google Play or I created this easy one link that you can easily click on in the description below to download for yourself. So definitely go check it out. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the newest PAL app. So let's take a look of our first big snowstorm that could unfold by Halloween. We've got a pretty significant Arctic blast coming for October standards by Halloween, but how do we get there? So let's walk you through between now and then. Here's the setup later on this afternoon. and It's plenty, <laughs> plenty warm across a good part of the US. The only cooler game in town is where they're gonna have some rain showers for the next two days across portions of the Ohio Valley and into the Mid-Atlantic as well as into the Northeast. But there's also this cooler pocket of air that's starting to build up there in Alaska into the Yukon Northwest Territories. That is the pocket of colder air that's gonna be building over the next six to 10 days is gonna be plunging southbound and literally almost reaching the Gulf Coast by the time we head towards Halloween. So let's take a look at the overall satellite picture. We've got a formidable system still out there in the Eastern Pacific. That is category three Norma out there into the Eastern Pacific. All indications are this is gonna continue northbound and slow down. Luckily, it's gonna weaken a little bit, but likely gonna be impacting the Cabo San Lucas area sometime this weekend. Then we also have got Tropical Storm Tammy gonna be impacting portions of the Leeward Islands, but luckily this is gonna be lifting out into the open waters. There's the, there's the rain showers that are gonna be impacting a good part of the mid-atlantic and into the northeast and then all eyes will be turning towards uh, the northwest territories where that storm system will be building as we get into the weekend and especially into early next week so wow look at some of these record highs folks we've got a lot of heat to contend with before we get there this was what unfolded yesterday across a good part of the west so all these areas in red that literally broke a daily record high temperature across a good part of California into Arizona, back into Utah region, into, into Nevada. That, that pocket of warm, if not almost hot air, is continuing to shift a little bit further east. So now areas into Texas and Oklahoma today are experiencing some of those record high temperatures. And on the satellite picture going into tomorrow, there is Norma getting dangerously close to the Cabo San Lucas region with some very heavy rainfall. And then of course, we've got that other rain pocket of instability across a good part of the Northeast and New England for literally the six out of seven weekends in a row that you've seen some heavier rainfall and just some cloudy, dreary skies in that neck of the woods. So that's the last thing you wanna see is just more rainfall, but unfortunately it's coming your way. So here's gonna be the setup on the surface map going into Monday. So we've got Norma, that's finally gonna be clearing the Baja of California. That's gonna be impacting a good part of Mexico, but it's gonna hit those mountain regions and likely dissipate pretty quickly. At the same time, we've got a pretty significant western trough that's gonna be building out there towards California. It's pretty clear skies across a good part of the southeast as well as into the Ohio Valley as that storm system off the New England coast will be slowly if lifting out into the open waters. And there is tropical storm Tammy, if not hurricane Tammy by then. So here's the setup going into Tuesday. We've got the remnants of Norma is gonna be dissipating, but that's gonna be spreading its precipitation back into West Texas, as well as into New Mexico, as we'll be taking a look at up here into the Northwest of Northwest, you know, British Columbia region into Southern Canada, as that colder air will start to pull and start to build and kind of pick up steam 
and those are going to be bringing some of the coldest temperatures so far this fall so that's the area of concern going into that tuesday time frame likely some heavier snow is going to be entering that neck of the woods as it's going to be entering portions of the united states still plenty warm further south so this pocket of energy is still going to be taking a while before this cold air invades that region so on the surface map going into wednesday so we've got the combination of the remnants of norma and the combination of this western trough that's going to be slowly migrating from west to east that's going to set up shop with additional rain showers into into the day on wednesday across a good part of eastern portions of new mexico especially into the texas panhandle into west texas and some of that's actually going to be sneaking into central texas even maybe even north texas by then and then you still kind of on the dry side and on a good part of the southeast after this weekend it's going to be dry across a good part of the east and the northeast as well as into the new england so you're going to get a break on the precipitation front after this weekend and then all eyes will be turning off towards the pacific northwest where arctic I, arctic air is going to be building across those regions and then it's going to bring a blanket of heavy snow in its wake originating back into the mountain regions of washington getting into idaho but especially into montana we could be looking at some one to two inch snowfall rates by then and along with some definitely some colder temperatures these are actual temperatures as we go into that thursday time frame we're talking october 26 by then yeah those are actually some below zero you know conditions starting to show up across these regions into the british columbia region and those single digits will start dropping into montana as that that pool of colder air will slowly try to get its act together but further south we still have all that heat we got all the heat further south into texas as well as in oklahoma so we are going to have a little bit of a cape issue we are going to have some severe storms that we're going to have to contend with on the day on friday out ahead of that significant cold blast that's going to be entering the picture so that's probably one of those days that we might have to fine tune going forward on how this is all going to come together but right now it appears to be friday it could be definitely on the marginal if not slight severe side but we're going to be contending not only with those storms but also so those heavier snows are going to continue to plunge a little bit further off south and back behind it yes that's a 1035 arctic high pressure that's something we haven't seen so far this season and that's going to bring the heavier snows all the way down into uh you know into the colorado region as well as into portions of you know wyoming here and that will be lifting into south dakota as well as into north dakota going into that thursday friday time frame because that that jet stream is going to be dipping a little bit dragging keep dragging down that colder air as that low pressure will be continuing to build and moving northeast by then so this is kind of the corridor where it's going to be dropping into the intermountain west regions literally kind of stopping around the rockies and then lifting northeast bound so this is we're going to be your most predominant snow track during that uh, time frame and there's the overall low pressure where it could be somewhere in the vicinity of the northern portions of nebraska here there's the lift underneath it and it's obviously got a lot of you know if not you know canadian kind of air with it as our first initial blast of definitely the coldest temperatures we've seen so far you know so far this fall and there's the proof guys as we continue to plunge and as we get deeper to that halloween time frame going to that friday as you wake up on the 27th it is definitely going to feel like fall and it's going to feel like winter in a lot of these places yeah that's deep purple those are some of these below zero you know you know wind chill factors within this region as the colder air will continue to press further southbound and there's the overall setup for some of the severe storms that could unfold i'm thinking nothing widespread nothing to be terribly too concerned about 
but we definitely have to fine tune especially as we trend towards that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Friday might be your most significant day, but it's really gonna be in, these, in this vicinity further south into West Texas, going into Oklahoma, as well as into North Texas, going into Arkansas. That would be on the day on Friday, and it's likely gonna be just to be on the marginal, if not almost slight, severe side by then. So here's the setup go, you know, going forward on the precipital water vapor, Going into Friday, we still have that area pocket of instability, the remnants of Norma, the remnants of the Western Trough. So you've got multiple days of beneficial rains across the deep south going into the you know, Southern Plains region. And that could be your most significant day we have to be watching out for, especially in Oklahoma City region, into the Dallas-Fort Worth region, getting maybe into the Austin region, back into Houston. Those are areas that we have to be concerned about for those marginally induced thunderstorms and definitely probably pockets of heavier training, banding, heavier rainfall within this vicinity. And of course, further north, we're still going to be watching that pretty significant cold front that's still getting its act together, bringing that Arctic high down to a 1036 Arctic high into the United States, pulling into Montana, pulling into the Wyoming region, by then as the snow line will continue to drop further south. So as we get closer again towards that Halloween time frame, we still got some rain showers further to the south, but the snow line will likely drop even further south, now extending into Nebraska, could even pick up portions of Iowa by then as that snowstorm will be continuing and as the cold air will continue to build and just you know, kind of dominate these regions with 20, if not almost 30 degrees below average temperatures. So it's definitely gonna be a significant change of what you're experiencing this week and then heading into next week and especially going towards that Halloween timeframe. So now we're getting closer to Halloween. This is the Monday, this is the Monday before, this is October the 30th. There's where that likely a cold front will be draped across a good part of Oklahoma as well as into Texas. And that's going to bring the most significant. There's that 1043 Arctic high pressure. Now the Arctic high is trending even further south into Wyoming, getting it into portions of Colorado by then. And by the time we go into that Halloween time frame, yeah, definitely be prepared for a chilly Halloween across a good part of the country. These are actually feels like temperatures going into that time frame. We've got widespread 20s, if not almost teens, showing up on the map for a good part of the country as we've got the 20s, feels like into the 20s across these regions, into Arkansas, across northern portions of Mississippi and Alabama, getting into the Georgia region, up here into the mid-Atlantic and to the northeast. So these are definitely some of the coldest temperatures likely you're gonna be experiencing since then, as it's gonna be a drastic difference in temperatures of what you're experiencing this week than going, going into uh, next week. But here's the overall kind of snowfall and the snowstorm what could unfold between now and then. And this is the ensemble guidance as of right now. So likely this storm will be originating up here into the British Columbia region, diving across into southern Canada, get it into the inner mountain west regions, and then heading into our north central U.S., diving into the Rockies, going to the north central U.S. We're likely going to have a blanket of heavier snows across a good part of Wyoming into Montana, as well as the Dakotas through uh, Minnesota, and then even further south, you can't roll out a dusting, if not maybe an inch, across these regions into you know, Kansas by then, maybe even maybe in as far south as northern portions of Missouri, even into Illinois, you could start to see some snowflakes starting to fly by then going into your Halloween time frame. So, guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Definitely check out my winter forecast after this update and catch the next update. Why I protect you for and after the storm.